in That's Asian where we was at. Yes. We was talking about who were the Asiatic people. Yes. yes. That's what we was talking about right there. But I also want to go back to um, harping back on um, the, the uh, Hebrews being enslaved in Egypt. Mm -hmm. If the Hebrews were enslaved in Egypt, what would they enslaved to do? What was they doing? What was they building? What was they, you know, job? What was their duty? Right. So you, you certainly have depictions in ancient Egypt showing um, captives uh, making um, structures of mud brick. Mm -hmm. The Bible describes in Exodus chapter 1 that when the children of Israel were in Egypt, that they definitely were building structures in ancient Egypt. They didn't say they were building pyramids, though. Um, they say that they build uh, P. Ramses, mm -hmm. uh, which now is an actual place. Scholars know this is an actual place. It's more, more so known as the House of Ramses, uh, per Ramses today. Um, we know that this is an actual place. So you do have a scenery in ancient Egypt. Yeah, but there is no mud brick in Kemet. Well, you actually do, because you actually have it on the stele. I'm about to show you right okay. now. You actually do have mud brick in ancient Kemet. If you're looking objectively, in my, um, all right, this is the Temple of Amun, and this shows captives. The city is Thebes, Egypt. The caption reads in the Medunetra, captives making bricks for the Temple of Amun at Thebes in Egypt. Herodotus was the first historian to accuse the pharaohs of employing slave labor to construct their monuments. If you look closely, you see captives, who some people regard as slaves, building a structure made out of mud brick. But who would and you say they were when you say some people regard well, as slaves? Well, when we're looking at the period, we're, Let me see. Let when me we look at the period, we're definitely talking about Asiatics. And if when you, when you read the inscriptions that are there, we're talking about people uh, from Asiatic stock. The next uh, stele is even more telling, the one that I'm going to show next. Mm -hmm. You know what? Send yes. this to me so I can put it on the screen oh, I definitely for the will. people. I definitely will. I definitely Text will. that to me. You know, I got to put that on the screen for the people. I definitely will. So they'll see what you're talking so even, about. Even, and I definitely will show you this too. Okay. Because here's the thing, son. If these people are working for free... Mm -hmm. then this guy wouldn't have... But a those are not the comedic people? Those could be the com mm -hmm. comedics. But it's not. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's the Asiatics, and I'll show you why. Okay. If this man... Excuse me, if these people are working for hire, they're, mm -hmm. they're being paid, right? Mm -hmm. This man would not be holding a whip in his hand. Oh, let me see. Yeah, so you can actually see that the slaves are being threatened, that if they're not complying and they're not uh, filling their quota, they're actually being beat. That runs congruent with what the Bible says um, in the Exodus narrative. The Exodus narrative says that the slaves were beat when they wouldn't make their quotas. That particular stele shows you that Asiatic slaves were beat when they weren't making their quotas. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so again, we're not arguing about... So you're saying that these people are Hebrews? I'm definitely they saying are these Hebrews. people are Hebrews, absolutely. Okay. There, is no other group of, there is no other group of Asiatics which tells this narrative. Mm -hmm. which agrees with what we can find in ancient Kemet. So we know that they're Hebrews. We also know that Hebrews are mentioned in ancient Kemet. Let's, let's, let's not um, forget, Nisut Merneptah, the Merneptah Stila, mentions the Israelites. But it mentions the Israelites post-Exodus. It mentions the Israelites after they leave Egypt. And it says that Mary Patah, which is his name in the Medunetra, it says Mary Patah pursued the children of Israel into this land, and decimated them, left them with no seed and no heir. Mm -hmm. That's totally false and fallacious because shortly thereafter is the Armana letters. The Armana letters are a group of letters that powerful Canaanite nation states are sending to the Nisut on the throne in ancient Kemet. And they're sending, writing to him saying, the Habiru that just left Egypt have come now to take control of thy cities. During this period of time, ancient Kemet owned most of southern Levant, southern Canaan land. So these Canaanite nations are now writing to the ancient people of Kemet and they're saying, the Habiru have left your land and they're swarming Kemet. Please send us artillery. 
Send us soldiers. Send us mercenaries so that we can fight for your land. It's really their land, mm -hmm. but they're calling it the Egyptian Nisut land or the Kemetic land because they own it. It's a vassal state of Kemet at this point. So the Armana letters actually co-sign parts of the Exodus narrative because in the Armana letters, it doesn't simply say the Hebrews are here to take land. It's written in the Armana letters, the Hebrews that left Egypt, that left Egypt. The Pharaoh doesn't write back and say, what Hebrews left Egypt? I don't know what you're talking about. So again, we're not arguing over whether or not Hebrews are in Egypt. Mm -hmm. The argument should be more centered on what period of enslavement are we talking about? Okay.